Do you think this 64% drop in earnings and profit is a one-off that you'll see a reversal in the coming quarter? Yes. Very good morning. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the costs were up, primarily cooking coal in the quarter four, and we had a subdued uh, steel price environment globally as well as in India, primarily because of low-priced imports uh, which came into the country. Uh, that impacted the margins. Uh, however, the volume uh, growth was still strong. Going into the uh, full year, if you see our results, I think we did quite well. Our EBITDAs went up by 52%, and it was the second highest EBITDA JSW steel. Uh, we are uh, seeing a very strong economic momentum in India, and that will uh, improve the steel demand going forward into the next year as well. Let's break it down. Jayan, you talk about uh, steel demand going forward. You're optimistic about it. What kind of demand? Give us a sense of, in terms of numbers, quantify that for us, please. Yes. So India last year had a demand of 136 million tons, which was a growth of 13.6%, incrementally 16 million tons in terms of volume. Uh, even in this year, although there is an election, so the activity has slowed down in the first quarter a bit, but post-election, post the budget, we expect it to come back to a growth trajectory. So even if you take about 9 to 10% growth, we see incrementally 12 to 13 million tons of steel demand this year as well. Uh, from a, uh, meeting the demand perspective, JSW Steel has added capacity. Currently, uh, we are just commissioning our 5 million ton steel plant in uh, uh, Vijayanagar. The hot strip mill is already commissioned. Uh, our phase two expansions in uh, one of our plants has been completed. Uh, overall, we'll be adding about 8 million tons of capacity over the year, but the full impact of that would come a, in this year and partly in the next year. Mm. Uh, you got hit by steel prices, the low steel prices. What assumptions are you making about steel prices going forward? Steel prices uh, have stabilized uh, in the last quarter. It dropped quite a uh, a bit internationally as well as in the domestic market, it has bottomed out. Uh, we have seen a price increase of about $20 uh, internationally, uh, and that's uh, reflected in India as well. So April and May has seen a price environment stability. We expect uh, the prices to be stable. We expect the cooking coal cost in this quarter, they're going down, so they would impact uh, the mar uh, margins positively. And our operating efficiencies on the back of some saving cost saving projects, which we have undertaken, will help the margin. So we see a better uh, FY25 with respect to volume, absolute EBITDA and per ton uh, EBITDA will normalize back to where we were prior to this last quarter. Uh, we know that you're concerned about steel imports. Might that impact prices? Yeah, steel imports is a concern, especially uh, China, because of a weaker domestic market, has been uh, in exporting uh, large quantities. Even in the last quarter, they exported about 26 million tons. India uh, uh, had a large chunk of that import coming in. Uh, so we are concerned uh, uh, at large, and I think there are steps which we need to take if this uh, kind of uh, volatile environment continues. Uh, we will watch it carefully and we hope that the improving uh, steps which China is taking would improve the domestic demand and exports will moderate uh, as we go into the year. Uh, Jayan, talk to us about cooking coal. Uh, what's your procurement strategy right now? So cooking coal, uh, you know, we are importing cooking coal from uh, various countries internationally. We are uh, in the process of uh, improving our raw material security on cooking coal. So we have acquired some domestic mines, which we are trying to operationalize. That would give us about 2 million tons of cooking coal. We have recently, uh, uh, just a few days back, uh, taken a stake in uh, Mozambique in a hard cooking coal mine, which is a very high PLV uh, grade cooking coal. The asset has about 800 million tons of uh, uh, cooking coal. Uh, it's a good asset, logistically close. Uh, we expect that to provide a lot of raw material security for our Indian expansions. Mm -hmm. And uh, going, going forward, uh, we will continue to look for assets which are strategically and commercially viable on the cooking coal side. Right. And in terms of cooking coal, are you buying from Russia? And if you are, what is the mode of payment? 
So cooking coal, we uh, we are not uh, right now procuring, uh, uh, but we are we have been procuring some uh, different kind of coals. They are the Corex coal, which we have been procuring from uh, Russia for many years. Uh, in a in a typical uh, steel operation, you need to basically uh, develop the sources over time. So that uh, continues, but that's again uh, not a very substantial quantities. Our main uh, cooking coal comes from Australia, uh, US, and Canada. Mm. You, you talked about how you made the acquisition of Mozambique and exploring elsewhere. Where are some of these assets? What might you be interested in? And are you in talks currently? Yeah, we have been looking at uh, various assets and primarily the hard cooking coal asset, the PLV coal. Uh, which has been a very uh, volatile in terms of cost. Uh, so those assets, uh, we have looked at Canada, we have looked at Australia, uh, we have looked at Mozambique, and Mozambique uh, is one of the very few large cooking coal assets which are still there in the world. Uh, we, we would like to develop this mines once the customary approvals are in place. Uh, we are hopeful that this will be a very good asset for us. Uh, we are looking at some operational mines uh, in some parts of the world. Um, if those uh, strategically fit us, we'll look at it. Parallelly, we are looking at the domestic coal as well, and uh, 2 million tons from three cooking coal mines which we have got will develop. I think those uh, will get developed over the next uh, two years or so, and that would mm. play into our overall uh, cooking coal requirement in India. Uh, Jayan, a lot of uh, Indian companies are formulating their decarbonization plan. What is yours? So, uh, yeah, happy that you asked the question. You know, we uh, we are in the leadership band uh, by CDP uh, in the sustainability index. On the water, we've got rating uh, A, uh, which I think is the only steel company in the world to get. Uh, we have also launched a SEED program, which got a COP28 award. The SEED program primarily aims at improving operational efficiencies on at ground across all the locations. We will be uh, saving about 18 million tons of CO2 emissions over the next seven years, and, and that's been a very good program. Uh, we are already running a CCU, carbon capture and use, of 100 tons per day at one of our locations, we are, and we are trying to see how we can expand those. Uh, we have started construction of the hydrogen plant at our uh, Vijayanagar steel plant, and we will test how this works. And as the technology evolves right. and commercially becomes viable, we'll improve on that as well.